Hello and welcome. My first public live on my public figure page. It is about time. I have been doing lives in the community for the last three years and my team asked if I would do a very special um, Q&A for you guys tonight on the most asked questions of 2019. Now again, these are the most asked questions for me in 2019 as a life coach. So welcome everybody who is jumping on. If something that I say resonates, feel free to share. Um, I'm Jessica Allstrom and I am an intuitive life coach and I travel all around the world helping the revolution of the evolution of our consciousness and doing my part to help with the quantum understanding of this self-realization journey that we're on. So hello and welcome everybody. I am gonna dive into the questions because although there's only about eight or nine questions here, I like to spend some time. Now I will tell you that this is my perspective of these questions answered and the perspective that I always choose to look at any question with is the idea of frequency and vibration at the root. So I'm not going to put any of my uh, necessarily opinion in these uh, questions. I'm not going to put my life experience in these questions. I'm going to answer these questions from a place of frequency and vibration, which is the quantum effect, which if, you, if you're on a spiritual journey, a lot of times you look at the quantum principles. And to me, what quantum means is, is all. It's the, it's the idea of the all-inclusive answers. It is the idea that the root of everything is frequency and vibration. And we are in either in alignment of that, we are in understanding of that, or we are in some sort of opposing out of alignment of that, and that creates our reality. So if you've been following me, you know that that's the basis of my teachings. And I like to stay very quantum in my approach to answering these questions. So as I answer these questions, you may have to look at your belief systems a little bit and shift your perspective as far as the way I'm going to ask you to look at certain things, okay? And my job is to push you into the blind spot and make you see who you really are from that higher perspective of creator, of you know who it is that's really creating that reality there. And when we bump up against things, like what does that actually mean? So what I had my team do is put together the most asked questions of the year, and I thought I would just answer them live. So as you guys are jumping online, again, welcome um, to my page and welcome to the evening, and let's get started. So the first question, and I'm actually going to do the biggest question first because I think that it's on everybody's mind right now, but it also kind of suggests the opening of other questions that we've been having for the last few years with weather, with what is happening on the planet, is what does it all mean? And again, I'm gonna give you this answer from a quantum experience and I'm gonna ask you to not look so much at the story, but to really look at the metaphor. Everything in quantum theory is understood through perspective. It's, it's understood through focus. So when we're looking at our reality, sometimes we can get really entangled in the story. We can get really stuck in what does it mean? And what did you mean? And what does it mean when this happens? And what does it mean when that happens? But if you rise above that a little bit and you look at everything as a metaphor, that's where I'm gonna ask you guys to go tonight. I'm gonna ask you to go more in the metaphoric space of understanding what is happening on this planet. Obviously, if you're in the know, if you're woke at all, you know that we are in a very, 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 very past evolution process. We are ascending. We are moving into alignment of our higher selves in human form. And we know that the awakening journey is not necessarily pleasant. It is burning, itching, gooing. It is rough. It is sad. It is mad. It is all things. It is the explosion of your emotional body. And it is the basically uprooting of all of your belief systems. Now, let's look at that as a metaphor. Why would that be any different on Earth? Why would it be any different what we're experiencing? Why would the Earth be experiencing nothing less than the, the same exact frequencies? So if we look at our emotional body, doesn't Earth have an emotional body as well? And isn't she purging? Isn't she clearing space? Isn't she burning down old stories, old belief systems, old systems to make room for new? Isn't that what the light body is all about? This ascension process all about is making space for that higher vibration to integrate into the human body. And the exact same thing is happening on Earth. Everything from our fires to our volcanoes to our 
earthquakes, to our floods, to the Amazon burning, which leads us to my very first question of the evening. Why is the Amazon burning? You know, we hear a lot of speculations in the news. We hear a lot of opinions. We hear a lot of spiritual perspectives. I actually heard the other day that the reason why the Amazon is burning is because everyone's not vegan. Hmm, that's one way to look at it. But let me look at it through a quantum experience, which means I'm gonna look at the totality of how everything is always in divine order. And if everything is always in divine order, is the Amazon burning wrong? Or is it just the next logical upgrade that needs to happen in order for the emotional body to burn through the system? Let's look at what the Amazon represents metaphorically as far as the metaphysical expression of Mother Earth. The Amazon is the lungs. The lungs is where we store all of our grief. The Earth's grief is stored right there in the Amazon and all that hydration and it is burning. Haven't you been purging all of your grief the last few years? Haven't you been an emotional storm the last few years? And didn't that need to happen? Didn't that fire need to come through you and speak your truth and have your angry periods and your sad periods? And why, why would we question when it happens on the earth? Now, everything happens again, synchronicity, synchronistically in divine order to create an outcome. And the outcome is the expression of the ascension. So however our, our lives need to ascend, it's gonna happen in the past of least resistance. So whether it was someone who was lighting the Amazon on fire to clear land for more farming and more, more people, I could say, okay, that's one way we could look at it. Or we could look at the universe doesn't make mistakes. We could look at it as it's a big metaphor of the purging of the emotional lungs of this planet to burn out pain, to metaphorically move energy and clear. The thing about fire is it produces ash, and ash is the thing that creates the most fertile ground. It is the way that the earth can grow back, and it is time for us to activate through watching that expression. It integrates and it actually helps us move into our heart center when we see things like this happening. So if you look at everything as divine order, we're looking at it like, oh my gosh, the Amazon is burning. What does this mean? Well, what does it mean in my universe? What does it mean in your universe? What does it mean for the grand scheme of things? To me, what it means is that we are becoming fearless and we are opening our hearts and we are purging our grief and we are burning down the old and we are making space for the new. And when the new energy comes up, it will be built on fertile ground of purity, of clearing. You know, everything is in place, you guys, right now. Nothing is actually out of order. Chaos is part of creation. Destruction is part of creation. When we look at one singular moment in time, it can, get, it can make us really triggered. It can say, oh my gosh, why is this happening? But if you take a step back and you look at how it's all happening in divine order, you can say that just like my own expression of my emotional body that's been purging the last few years during my awakening journey, that it is happening from a micro and a macro position. It is happening as the weather represents emotion on this planet. And it is us moving into a state of open-hearted courage and fearlessness to really make changes on this planet. Because without pain, we really, nothing else gets our attention. Without fear, nothing makes us move. Without fight or flight, we don't really feel alive. So this is usually how the, the ascension process has been awakening us, is through bumping us against our own programs, banging us into our patterns, showing us our belief systems. And when we as, as empaths and guides and messengers and practitioners look at anything as other than divine order, we victimize ourselves. We put ourselves on the other side of opposition, which is fear. And we are afraid of what is already in perfect divine order. So for me, that is the answer that I can give you guys as far as why is the Amazon burning? The Amazon is burning to make space and purge long, old, due grief that has been sitting on the land and sitting in the lungs of this planet, and it's time to open that up and really open the heart. Things like this, devastation on the planet brings us together. 
it brings us together and it helps remind us that we can be in a unified structure. It brings us to a state of courage where we're not in judgment of each other and we have to come together to help. And that's what we're doing. So you can see how everything is in divine order as it always will be. All right? Okay. My next question of the year, and I have been answering this question for years, honestly. Why isn't the law of attraction working for me? I think the better question here is, why is the law of attraction not working in my favor? Because it is working for you in every moment. Everything is magnetic. Your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions are all magnetic. So what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're saying, right? How you're demonstrating your life is all creating a magnetic experience. And everything you do has a cause and effect. There's a lot of things that you may be doing that you don't know that are in the way of the things you want. You may think that your wanting and your desire and your mantras and your affirmations and your meditation hour is enough to swing the law of attraction in your favor, but you really need to look at the other 23 hours a day when you're looking at what you don't have, when you're looking at what someone else has, when you're looking at the mistakes you've made in the past and you're fearful of the future, because the universe is watching all of those frequencies as well. And so what happens is the reason why you have bittersweet manifestations is because your energy is split. Your energy is not in coherence of exactly what you want all the time. You're going between what you don't want and what you do want and what you haven't gotten and what someone else has gotten and what you're worried about getting and what you're fearful of. And because you are a magnetic force of energy, wherever your focus goes, energy flows. So if I'm thinking about what I don't have, the universe is also providing me proof that I don't have that. So the law of attraction is always, always, always working perfectly 24 hours a day. But are you working to attract what it is that you want 24 hours a day? Probably not. And I know for me, I have really worked a lot with the law of attraction. And I know that when I attract something that feels bittersweet, and what I mean when I say that is, you know, the perfect job with the coworker from hell, you know, the perfect job that doesn't pay enough, right? The perfect relationship that you kind of lose yourself in, right? You get the money, but you lose the time. That's what I'm talking about because that's what you're attracting. If you really got serious with yourself, you really are attracting things that you want, but they're bittersweet. They're entangled with suffering and pain and struggle. And that's what you don't want. You don't want the struggle. You don't want the pain. You don't want, you know, the misfortune. You don't want just enough. Have you guys noticed how you manifest just enough or just what you need? And it is because you're focused on what you do want and what you don't want. So the universe is giving you exactly a perfect byproduct of a mixed bag of manifestations. And when you look at the seven steps of manifestations that I teach on a daily basis every day, we understand what it actually requires to be thought, word, and deed, which means my thoughts need to match my actions, which needs to match my sayings, which means I can't say I'm broke and hope that the universe provides me with abundance. I can't stay trapped in my relationship and become free. I can't be a paradox and I can't be, I can't be both things unless I'm willing to experience both things. And I bet you, if you looked at your daily thought patterns, actions, expressions, and language, you would see that the universe is actually showing up perfectly based on what you're thinking and feeling throughout your day. So your job is to master your focus. Your job is to look at cause and effect. Your job is to say, do my words match my actions? Do my belief systems, right, match my desires? Because if I was raised in a family with no money and I have a desire to have money, I'm in a contradiction of energy. So I've got to change that, which means I have to get into the root of what I actually believe. And I have to start working on creating my focus throughout the day that is based in freedom, that is based in abundance. I can't look at poverty and look at suffering and look at an empty bank account and will myself hard enough with desire to create abundance. I actually have to see things that are not quite there yet. And I have to feel things that are quite not within me. And that takes focus. It takes imagination. It takes vision. And it takes inspired action. And it takes surrender. 
And that is the formula basically is it takes you being consistent with your thoughts, words, and deeds so that the universe can be consistent with your true desires. So the unit law of attraction is not broken. It's not against you. It is always working in perfect harmony with who, what you are, but you have to remember you are me, myself, and I, you have an ego security system that says no all the time. It's got walls around you, you know, to keep you safe so that you don't get too vulnerable. You've got people pleasing mechanisms. You've got all kinds of protection elements in front of your heart. And then you have this inner child that's begging to be seen and heard and loved. And then you have this higher self that is already complete. So you look at the law of attraction and you say, is the me, myself, and I all on the same page? Are we singing the same song? Are we asking for the same things? Because the universe only has one answer and it's always yes. So if you say I'm broke, the, answer, the universe says yes. If you say I'm scared, the universe says yes. And it just continues to prove your yes. Prove your yes. You are magnetic. Every cell in your body is like a stored information CD and it's playing 24 hours a day based on everything you've ever been, everything you could be, and everything you are in this moment. And it is sending that signal to law of attraction right or the universe however you want to call it and it is reflecting back to you a perfect image of exactly the totality of what you are and that's why the law of attraction is working perfectly for you but it is created in a mixed bag of manifestations because you are a mixed bag of feelings so that's what i would like for you guys to think about when you are questioning law of attraction moving forward is it is uh, am I in harmony and is my desires within my own belief systems? Because you've got to get your magnetic attraction correct if you want to see back what it is your true heart's desire. All right? Okay, moving on. We are going here. We are progressing. The next question I get all the time, why can't I get over my broken heart? And the good old twin flame relationship, the one that has been the heroin effect in your life, the one who literally ripped out your heart and destroyed you, why can't you let that go? I get this question all the time. Why can't I let him go? Why can't I let her go? What is it about that energy, that relationship that is so entangled within me? And I have done a lot of research on this, not only in my personal life, but with thousands of clients all over the world. And the common denominator here to this question is very interesting. You know, love is one of these things that we think is unconditional and eternal. And at the, at the root of love, that's exactly what it is. But then we look at human love and we look at the stories of love and we look at how we were raised and what love meant when we were children and how we were emotionally neglected or over parented or under nurtured or undervalued or not seen and not heard. And we became performers as children. We learned to perform for what it is that we desired. We learned to cater people's egos. We learned to walk on eggshells. We learned to desire something that we could never have. And we built that into my definition of love. My definition of love is pain. So when we grow up into bigger bodies, but still inner children in our soul, we chase the relationship that is unavailable, which means that it has the most potential and our heart is exploding with it, but we can't quite connect. Our wounds hit up against each other, our pain and our baggage bump up against each other and no matter what we try and no matter what we give and no matter what we create is just not there and the desire to connect number one thing we are doing on this planet is we are here to connect and when you cannot get that deep-seated heart connection that you want so badly it becomes a full-blown addiction and this full-blown addiction is based in pain, not love. We are taught that love is pain as children just through observation, practice, and awareness. We are taught that these relationships that we had our first seven years is what love is. 
So the unavailable father, right? The fearful mother. We chase them. We chase them because we're still looking to fulfill that void that we didn't have as children. So we find ourselves very attracted to the person who's literally going to do us dirty exactly how it's always been. And have you noticed that you have no problem getting over the vanilla relationships, the boring relationships, the ones that love you more than you love them? It is the ones that you are literally obsessed with, that you fully lose yourself in, that you sing and dance and perform for attention that never feel it fully actually heal. So those are the relationships that I get asked about all the time. The obsessive, heroin-based, high, low, pain-induced, chronic suffering relationships that we just can't let go of. So now you know why we have them. So how do we actually let go of these? Okay, not gonna like the answer. Whoops, cancel. No, we're good. Um, now you're gonna like the answer to this. Nobody, does. no ego likes the answer to this. Because ego is going, how do I make him stay? How do I get him back? How do I get him to notice me? How do I get him to fall in love with me? Just tell me that, Jess. And I don't have that answer. Because the answer is, is that relationship was never designed for you to live happily ever after. That relationship was designed to push you and force you into self-love. That relationship was designed to basically bring all the toxic energy from childhood and put it right in your lap so you could heal it. That relationship was designed to wake you up into the fullness of your own courage and your own heart and make your heart basically break wide open so that you could see who you were really wanting to love the whole time was sitting right in the mirror. That twin flame, addictive, compulsive relationship is bringing you home to yourself. And I know ego's like, that is not what I wanted. That is not what my tarot card said. Well, I'm here to tell you that from a quantum experience, if there is any hole or any void or any lack inside of you, no one on the planet will ever be able to satisfy that. No money, no time, no relationship, no amount of beauty, no amount of riches is going to fill that hole inside of you. And I know that there have been people who have just come into your life and blown you wide open to that pain. But that pain has always been there and it was just re-experienced. See, the thing is in childhood, we are madly in love with our parents even if they don't love themselves. And we want more of their attention and time um, than we ever really even realized because they are the center of our universe. And when they don't show up for us, and they also teach us to not show up for ourselves, it creates a disassociation between me and myself, me and others. And I begin to idolize the relationship that I'll never have. So as I grow up and I start looking for a mate or a relationship, notice what you're attracted to. You guys, metaphorically, we're always attracted to the wound because that's where higher self wants us to go look. Look at where the pain is. Look at where your broken parts are. Look at where your fractal energy is. Look at where you're disassociated with because you're actually on the planet to self-realize yourself into unity of oneness. Whoops, I'm freezing. I'm gonna keep going. So as we're moving into unity of oneness, we're using, and that's, a, that's not a great word to use, but we're kind of using and manipulating other relationships to come back home to ourselves, okay? And when we do that, we're realizing our capability of love is not through attachment. Our capability of love is through connection. It is the icing of my cupcake, not mixing in my ingredients. It is you and me complimenting each other, not consuming each other. So after we usually heal from those heartbreaks, we move into a state of self-love, we reintegrate completely, and then usually the relationship that it comes next after that, hopefully, if you learned your lesson and you were you know, able to connect with self-love, the next relationship after that is about partnership. It is about expansion. It is about growth. It is about two self-loving people walking each other home versus consuming and asking questions. If you're in a relationship right now where you're asking a thousand questions about what he feels and what his intentions are and what he's doing and you know or what she's thinking, that is a relationship that is taking you into pain. It is bringing you into old wounds. 
So if you're asking those questions, what I would recommend is say, what is it about me that needs this person to love me to feel whole? Because your answer is self-love, guys. That's why we can't let them go because they are the closest representation to love that we have ever experienced. And the fact that we can't connect with them makes us want it more. And it is, it is a painful yet very necessary relationship in our realities. And it is the, usually the relationship that helps you grow the fastest. Because once you reach self-love, you pretty much become the creator of your own reality. And people, places, and things begin to reflect back to you that level of self-love you have inside. So hopefully that answered your question in the quantum perspective, okay? Next question. Um, why do I always get stuck with the wrong mate? Why do I always pick the wrong person? Why do I always pick the wrong business partner? Why do I always get into one-sided friendships, right? Why is it that I get really excited about something and then the bottom falls out, okay? Well, you know, you have to kind of look at your conditioning, your belief systems, your track record. You guys ever want to know like what you're manifesting right now in your now reality? Look at your track record, right? Look at your belief systems that you don't want to believe in. Look at your stories. Look at your patterns. Look at your disassociations. Because if law of attraction creates law of reflection, then everything in your life is a reflection of some sort of story that's running at a cellular level, right? Doesn't mean it's you, doesn't mean it's what you want. But what I've noticed, you guys, is if you get too excited about something, like there's love bombing going on, like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect person, this is the perfect business partner, this is the perfect solution, and that's on the coattails of pain, like you're just getting over something and all of a sudden the perfect thing presents itself, it's usually going to be a reflection of more pain because this entire system that we're playing in, our virtual reality setup, our matrix of suffering is designed all in pain and reward, which means we are usually attracted to something that looks like it's going to save us, something that's going to be the missing piece. We usually are not choosing from a neutral state of being. We're in some sort of agenda. Like I either need to rescue you to feel valuable or you need to rescue me so that I can feel safe. So you have to look at your agenda when you're making choices, and if you look at your track record and look at your patterns, your current manifestations of the present moment make perfect sense. Well, okay, no wonder I attracted this business partner, because my track record is I get let down, right? And I get taken, and I get used, and that's my story, right? And as long as I'm in my story, no matter how much I don't wanna believe in that story, when I go to be attracted to something, you guys have to remember that whatever you're attracted to is not necessarily coming from the higher, bigger part of you. Attraction has nothing to do with your higher self. Attraction has a lot to do with your pain stored at a cellular level. Because attraction, high levels of attraction, those love bombing relationships that ghost you two days later, right? They're coming from lack. They're coming from suffering. They're coming from pain. So when we create our reality out of pain, suffering, lack, and emptiness, we might get, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing. We might get what looks like the perfect thing on paper, and then we get involved in it, and it disappoints us just like everyone else has. So I always say when you're making big choices in life, friends, relationships, partners, jobs, commitments, tours, world tours, we want to look at where is my vibration? Where am I resonating right now? Am I resonating in lack? Am I resonating in pain? Am I needing something to come and rescue me? Do I need anything? Because that need is part of your egoic empowerment system, which means anytime you need something, you're actually in the vibration of lack. So if you're in the vibration of lack and you need something and you start creating in that vibration, you're going to create more lack, but it's going to trick you because it's going to look like the solution. It's a big hamster wheel. 10 steps forward, 10 steps back, which is my next question. Why can't I get ahead? Why is it that my life is 10 steps forward, 10 steps back? Why is it that I train for a marathon and break my leg the day before? Why is it that I get a bunch of money and then lose it all? Why is it that I give my heart to someone and they crush it? Because, unfortunately, this virtual reality system that we're in, you know, 
this, this kind of collective belief system is built around suffering. It is built out of pain. It is built out of slavery. So if we're going to hack the system and crash the system, we can't operate from the belief systems that built all the walls. Have you guys noticed how your very jail cell that you live in right now is built out of love? Think about it. What is, what is, who is your warden in your life, right? Is it your kids? Is it your hubby? Is it your job? It's, it's usually built out of a foundation of love. Do you see how that's such a catch-22? Like the whole system is designed to fail us. It is designed to use what we love the most to keep us small, little, insignificant, and ordinary. When we were actually designed to be extraordinary and fearless. We were designed to be supernatural, but love pins us in the jail cell. Isn't that interesting how we use love against ourselves to grow? Well, I can't do that because I've got kids, right? I can't go here because my husband doesn't like that. You know, I don't, can't go to this because we don't have the money, right? So you have to look at your obligations and your agreements that you have made that keep you small and little. And you'll see how it's the belief systems that you're not paying attention to at the underlying root system that are basically keeping you from like running towards an open gate. Wow, I see an open gate. I'm running, I'm running, I'm making momentum. I'm actually achieving something. Wow, I just launched my website. This is awesome. And then you didn't realize there was a leash around your neck and it pulls you back, pulls you back into suffering because that's the program. So, I'm a biohacker, obviously. I've built my entire career on hacking this system. And so what you have to understand is that this matrix that we live in and we operate in is not necessarily all the time needing your participation. What it's actually needing is your observation. You need to observe your patterns. You need to observe your belief systems. You need to observe your operations. You need to observe your own actions and your behavior. Take a step back and go, huh, definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But you think because you're in a new place, a new house with a new man, that it's all gonna be different this time, but it's not. If you're operating out of the limited system of a jail cell that is based in love, Matter of fact, you're always going to get yourself stuck right back in that loop. So in order to get out of the loop, you have to go quantum. You have to completely change your perspective. You have to hack your programs. You have to disarm your security systems. You have to get neutral. You have to become the observer. You have to step out of the game. You have to step into the field of potential where all universes reside all opportunities, all new people, places, and things exist that are not in the program. And if this is just virtual reality, you're only going to have access to what you have in the game. So if you want a new game, you got to turn it off. You got to step out. You got to reboot it. You got to become a game coder. You got to become a game writer. And then you become the archetype when you re-enter. And this is exactly what we've been doing in our classes this year with my team all over the world, 106 countries, we're literally learning how to hack this system by non-participation, which means I'm not getting involved in the pain. I'm not resisting the powers that be. I'm not fighting against money. I'm not, I'm not in a war with time. I'm not angry at myself. I'm finding that neutral, empowered I am within me and I'm stepping out so that I can choose how to rewrite my script and say, you know what? I want a win-win situation. I want to understand that everything is always divine. I want to understand and be able to interact with truly amazing self-loving people. And then when I come back in the game, I don't settle for less. I method act my way all the way through the game until the game basically destroys itself around me. And repopulates as a new reality. So anybody that is creating heaven on earth is doing this. So however you can biohack, whether you're part of our team that is going through this process right now in the I am training, or you're doing this on your own, you have seen where you've been able to infiltrate and hack the system, change the codes, re rewrite the script, because there's a script we're born into. You know, mom was afraid, dad struggled, like 
that's our story. It's in every cell of our body, which means our own bodies, our own biochemistry is programmed against your own success. Okay? But we know with epigenetics, right? Quantum healing, repatterning, right? And bringing fact fractals back together into the I am, we know that we were born to do this. We are not afraid. We were born for this. This is who we are and this is why we've come. We knew we were coming into a broken system not to point fingers at it and judge it, but to clean it up, to change it at a frequency and vibrational point. Okay? All right, let's look at what we've got next. Let's see. I might have gotten through them. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Those are the major ones. Those are the major ones. I think I'll, I'll pick one more and kind of work, work you guys into this. And this question is more for you, right? I just answered the top 2019 questions for, from what I get on a daily basis, emails from all around the world, okay? And I know you've got money questions, and I know you've got time questions, and I will tell you that money is just energy. And when you take your focus off of money, money and you put your focus on your own worth and your own deserving and your own freedom, and your own safety. Even if money can't be involved because it's too triggery, right? It's too toxic to think about. If you focus on those four frequencies, you will become a money magnet, okay? And I will say that let go of the money and get right with yourself. Find that self-love. Self-love is a magnet for abundance and freedom and, and money, you guys. It is one of those things where you don't have to necessarily be a good person to get money, but you'll notice everybody with money really thinks highly of themselves, right? And that is one of the frequencies. So my question for you guys is, we're moving into 2019, or 2020, excuse me, moving out of 2019. The year of vision, the year of perfect vision, 2020. Metaphor, metaphors, always metaphors. Guys, think in metaphors. Your life will be so much more pleasant when you don't get so locked in the stories. Perfect vision, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna see and what are you willing to look at differently? What are you willing to give up that is holding you back? How are you, how are you gonna to move towards fearlessness? How are you gonna be able to see everything in divine order so that you can let go of the pain and suffering in your lungs, in your heart chakra? Because if we're here to see the perfect vision, that third eye component, right? That true understanding of wisdom that everything is in divine order and every relationship is designed to move us into a point of self-realization, self-mastery, then we never have to look at anything that's ever happened to us as bad or good. It was an experience that was very important for us to viscerally have to awaken into the grand master of who we came to be. Wellness is our awareness. Awareness is our wellness. This is where our wealth is. It is in the awareness of who you are. And the only way you're truly gonna know who you are is observation, not practice. The more you practice, the more entangled you get. Take a step out. Really decide what it is you wanna see for 2020 and how you want to feel about yourself. And and really choose self-love in making big changes that are gonna set you free. Even if it means breaking down old jail cell walls that are made out of obligation and time and, and commitments. Because to be someone's light and hold yourself back because you don't believe that they can do it themselves is cruelty to them. We all have the same light. We all have gifts. We all have higher self that is waiting to integrate. But when we constantly walk on eggshells and feed people's egos and help them stay small, which makes us small, we don't really move very far. We go 10 steps forward and 10 steps back. So my question for you guys is, what and who do you wanna see yourself as 2020? Because the law of attraction works based in who you believe you are, not what you believe in the world. It's not what you believe about the government. It's not what you believe about money. It's not what you believe about time. The law of attraction is actually working off of what you truly feel about you. Not at a conscious level where you are, you know, you're your hero and you're number one. I'm talking about the subconscious and unconscious parts of you that have been stepped on and 
trampled over and abused and hurt and beaten and neglected. Look at those parts of you and decide which parts of you need more of you. And the more of you that shows up for you, the bigger and expansive you can be. And you guys, let's face it, the brighter the light, the more people you can help, right? When your abundance and your wealth returns, you can really be a driving force that changes this planet. Holding yourself back for a couple of relationships here and there, you guys, I'd like you to rethink that because you are the universe in static motion. You are literally a fractal imagination experiencing itself through a conscious experience of a body. You are the universe. And it is time we all start acting like it because the, the earth is doing exactly what she needs to do. And so are we. Let yourselves purge. Let yourselves be, have your angry face, your crying face your feeling phase, express yourself and become the observer of what it is that you're playing out and decide, do I want to keep playing out this character or do I want to return to the truth of my I am, which is I am worthy, I am safe, I am free, I am deserving, I am satisfied, I am connected, I am creative, right? And then demonstrate all of that through your solar plexus because it is really about these, this first seven year cycle that we just started in 2019 is the beginning of the clearing. We're clearing out the lower chakra systems, the root, the sacral, the solar plexus to make space for the fearlessness in the heart to open and the truth to be told, which means the truth is underneath the fires and the volcanoes. You guys, the truth has to come up and it has to resurrect. And the things that are happening on planet Earth are clearing and making space for the truth to come home. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I love you all. I cannot wait to finish our I Am training. Um, it is a workshop that I am putting on in a private classroom here on Facebook. If you're part of my community, you know all about that, which is Jessica Alstrom Quantum Revolution. We also have a couple of tickets left for our Kansas City tour. Um, that's right. We're doing Kansas City, the heart chakra of the United States our last US tour and is all based in quantum healing and the field of potential. It is about bringing play and purpose into instant manifestation because you guys think about it, play is the secret to hacking the system. Not action, not working hard, not struggling. Struggling keeps you stuck in the matrix. Playing pulls you out. So come and play with us in the field of potential. Let me teach you how to quantum heal and manifest anything you want within your own body energy and just come play with us. So that is uh, the weekend of September 27th right here in Kansas City. Go to quantumrevolutiontour.com for your tickets. There's a couple of rooms left at our discounted rate. So if you're thinking about joining, make sure you get your rooms booked before the, uh, this week and you'll get that at a discounted rate. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the field of potential and the I am training this week. Thanks so much for letting me show up and, and do this Q&A. See you guys soon.